So I am continuing to do motion with uh, drag forces. Uh, so I've done linear drag and one dimension, linear drag and vertical, and then two dimensional. Uh, and this is, I did quadratic drag uh, with no gravity. So an object moving horizontal, don't worry about the gravity. And now we're gonna do quadratic drag in the vertical direction. So a falling object uh, with a drag force that depends on the velocity squared. That's what I call a quadratic drag. So in this case, here's a falling object, the gravitational force pulling down, drag force up, moving down. Um, the drag force is some coefficient C, depends on you know the type of air, the size, uh, the shape, stuff like that. And then the magnitude of the velocity, and then this V hat is a unit vector uh, because once you take the magnitude of the velocity, you can't get a vector. But don't worry, we're gonna deal with this in one dimension anyway, so we're not gonna worry about that. So let's just go ahead and write the uh, Newton's second law in the y direction. So here I have F net y is gonna be, M, I'm gonna use this V, even though it's the y velocity, M dV dt, that's the acceleration. And then the forces are gonna be negative mg plus cv squared. So here, uh, it's important to notice that I'm only dealing with a falling object. Uh, if you have an object that, that goes up and then comes back down, it's gonna be more complicated because uh, the direction here will change, but the direction, the magnitude, the velocity is always positive, so you squared. So it can get tricky. So that's why I'm gonna just deal with it falling down. Okay. So we want to get this into uh, a separation of variables like we've done before. We want to get all the V terms on one side. Uh, and for the case of no gravity, uh, this term was gone. It was actually pretty, e well, it wasn't hard. Well, it wasn't impossible, okay? But now we have this constant term in here that really does mess things up. So we did this trick with linear drag and we can use a similar trick. So let's think about an object that's fallen for, for a long time, and so it has a gravitational force mg and a drag force fd, and these two are equal, so it's moving at a constant speed, and we call that terminal velocity. Terminal, well, I don't know why I'm even spelling it out. Terminal velocity. Okay, so um, at terminal velocity, those two are equal, so I can write uh, the terminal, oh, this is going to be vt. So c vt squared equals mg. The magnitude of the terminal velocity squared is m, and that's the magnitude of the gravitational force. So I can put that in up here for this, and I get m dv dt equals negative c vt squared plus c v squared. Uh, so I can factor out a negative C, and this becomes negative C uh, V squared minus VT squared, right? Because if I bring the negative sign out, that one becomes uh, no, that's positive. Wait, if I do that, then this is the opposite way around. Okay, well, let's just bring out the C. <laughs> C, uh, B squared minus V, T squared. But actually, I want it in a particular form. Uh, so actually, I do want to get that negative sign out of there. Uh, well, that's fine. Leave it like that. No. Okay, and then I'm going to factor out the V, T squared. So I get, if I multiply this and divide by uh, v t squared over v t squared, then I get, uh, bring this one in, I get c times v squared over v t squared minus one. And now I am gonna bring that negative sign out. So it's gonna be negative, and I'm gonna divide by m. So I get negative c over m, uh, one minus v squared over v t squared. I'm trying to get this in a particular form that just makes it a little bit simpler. Um, what did I do? I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, I wrote, but negative c over m, oh, times v t squared. But uh, negative g is equal to c v t squared over m. So this is gonna be negative g, okay. So now I have dv dt 
equals negative g, 1 minus v squared over vt squared. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, I mean, it's still not, still not nice, right? But we can proceed a little bit. So now let's get these uh, terms separated. Uh, so if I rewrite this, if I divide both sides by this, I multiply both sides by dt, I get dv over 1 minus v squared over vt squared equals negative g dt. And so that's something, now I have all the t's on one side, all the v's on the other side. I can integrate both sides as hard as that may be. Okay. So let's just rewrite that because that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm going to put up here vt squared, cvt squared equals mg, because that's important. It'll come up later. And then I'm going to rewrite this, dv1 minus v squared over vt squared equals negative g dt. Okay, so how do I integrate that? I want to integrate both sides, indefinite integral, I'll get a constant. That side is easy. This side, not easy. Okay, so let's make a substitution. Um, let's say, uh, I think this will work, u equals v over vt. So if, if I write that, then I can get du equals uh, dv over vt. So dv equals vt du. And then on the bottom, I'm going to get 1 minus u squared. So this integral becomes uh, dv over 1 minus v squared over vt squared. I'm going to put for dv, I'm going to put uh, vt du. So I get the integral of vt du. And then I have 1 minus u squared. Still, oh, that's, uh, still a very difficult integral. Okay, So let's write this. So these are tricks. So if you don't see these tricks, not a big deal. Um, you know, tricks are just something that you accumulate over time. So I can write this as vt du over 1 minus u times 1 plus u, right? Because if I have uh, 1 squared minus u squared, then I can write it as 1 minus u times 1 plus u. So if I squared 1 times 1, negative 1 u plus 1 u, uh, and then u minus u squared. So that's how that works. Now, I want to write this term. I want to say uh, 1 over 1 minus u times 1 plus u. I want to separate that and call it a over 1 minus u plus b over 1 plus u. But I want to find out what a and b are. So in order to do that, I need just to get a common denominator here. So I'm going to multiply this term. This is, I know this is like, what the heck is he doing? Where's this physics stuff? I know, it's just, it's just a long integral. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to multiply this term by 1 plus u over 1 plus u, this term by 1 minus u over 1 minus u. So I get a times 1 plus u plus b times 1 minus u and then the con they'll have a common denominator of 1 minus u times 1 plus u. So we're undoing what we just did. So, But if we want that to work, then this stuff up here has to equal to 1. Okay, so let's just, so this up here has to equal 1. So I can say, a, I'm going to multiply this out. a plus uh, au plus b minus bu equals 0. Now I'm going to gather the constant terms and the non-constant, I mean the, the u terms and the non-u terms. So here I have a plus b plus uh, u times a minus b equals 1 plus 0u. So that means that this term has to be 1, this term has to be 0. So if this term is 0, then a has to be equal to b. a equals b. And if this term is 1 and a is equal to b, then a and b is, are equal to 1 half. So, whew, okay, so that means that we have now the integral. I'm going to write it out. dv 1 minus v over vt squared squared equals 
Uh, I'm going to write that as, a, I should have done that, vt du over 1 minus u squared equals the integral of vt du over, and there's a half. I'm going to pull the half out front. 1 half. Um, 1 plus u plus vt du over 1 minus u. That's all integrated. Now that I can integrate, right? I can pull the vt out front and I have the integral of, of du over 1 plus u. Now, I could do another u substitution and I guess I technically should write that out. I just don't want to. Um, let's just say alpha, which is a dumb variable. I'll say it. Alpha is 1 plus u. D alpha is going to be du. So this is going to be, uh, the, this integral is going to be, uh, I'll put equals, 1 half vt. And then that first integral is going to be equal to uh, d alpha over alpha, which is the natural log of alpha. So I get the natural log of 1 plus u. I double substituted. That's what happened. Now over here, I could do the same thing, but now d, if I say alpha is 1 minus u, then, so let's write that out, of beta. Beta is 1 minus u. d beta is negative du. So I'm going to get a negative term up here. So I'm going to get minus ln of 1 minus u. And then I have a difference of natural logs. Uh, I can write that as 1 half vt natural log of 1 plus u over 1 minus u. Now I need to put back in my value for u, uh, and then I need to integrate the other side of the equation, which is trivial. The integral of negative gt is uh, dt is negative gt plus a constant. So putting that all together, I get 1 half vt ln 1 plus u, which is v over vt, 1 plus v over vt over 1 minus v over vt uh, equals negative gt plus c. So now at t equals 0, v equals v0. It's an initial velocity. Um, it can get messy. Okay, so let's just say I drop it from rest. For this case, I want to just drop it from rest because the, the math gets really bad. So drop from rest. So v0 equals 0. So when I put in t equals 0, this is 0. Um, and that's 0. No, so I get 0. I get 0. So I get 0 on both sides. So c is equal to 0. So that means that uh, I get this function. I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, 2 over vt. Is that vt there? du dv is... Oh, see, I messed up. This is 1 over vt. 1 over vt. I should... I'm sorry about that. So this is going to be 1 over vt, vt, 1 over, 1 over, I'm a, I'm a terrible person, okay, 1 over. So now I multiply by 2 vt, and I get the natural log of 1 plus v over vt over 1 minus v over vt equals negative 2 vt gt. Let's just check right here, because this can't have units. So this is meters per second, and this is going to be, wait, meters per second times meters per second squared times second. Meter, that's not right. I think it is. I had it right the first time. du Oh, that was right. Arg. 
Okay, I was right the first time. Okay, so this is one over. That which makes sense. See, I checked it. I got I caught my error because I used units. So let's say natural log of one plus v over vt over one minus v over vt equals negative two gt over vt. Okay, so now let's check the units. So up on the top I have meters per second squared times seconds. Uh, divided by meters per second. So that is unitless, so that is good. Okay. So now I can take the inverse of both sides and I get uh, 1 plus V over VT over 1 minus V over VT equals E to the negative 2GT over VT. And now I want to solve for V. Ugh. This is not fun. Um, I think, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop there. Okay. I think algebraically you could solve this for the for v. Okay. There are some other math tricks that you could do. Um, I think I have effectively done that. Um, and and so what I'll do is just leave that there. I, I, I'm gonna make one more video about projectile motion to show you uh, the difficulties. Uh, we have with uh, projectile motion in with quadratic drag uh, and how it, you can do it with linear drag and you can do it with no drag but it's it's really difficult with quadratic drag uh, and then I'll make a numerical model in that video so I'll stop that here uh, I know that's kind of incomplete but I think I set it up most of the way that that I accomplished my goal oh so if you want the other videos on drag uh, the playlist a link to the playlist is down below